Hello, everyone, and welcome to kick.com slash CLX Gaming, where we're now on uh, for Tuesdays. You know, you caught me off guard, and all of a sudden I was like, hey, there's an intro that I could definitely screw up. Why not? Uh, this is CLX Foundry Live, and uh, we're going to jump inside of a brand new build with a brand new case today. Obviously, also here are my co hosts for the kick side of things. It is our lead technical expert, Paul Steffens, and today's master builder, Hayden Hutchinson. What's Hi, up? guys. Hello. We're back on the green side of things. On the so, green um, so before we show you this brand new case that we've never built anything in before, let's talk a little bit about what's going on. This month's giveaway is absolutely amazing. You can see it to the left of Hayden's shoulder. That is our partner. We have partnered up with Kick and Beacon for this month's giveaway. It's an incredible case with an incredible set of gear, and you're going to get a Beacon Mix Create with it. That's awesome. So to find out more about that, simply type Give Kick into the chat and we'll make sure that you can get the link to go and apply now pay attention throughout the stream because periodically there's going to be codes dropped and those codes are going to get you an extra 100 sometimes 200 entries towards that giveaway you can find codes on our social media at clx gaming for youtube tiktok and twitter our discord uh discord.gg slash clx gaming and over on my channel which is uh dg blue pdx here on kick and we'll be having codes going out today it's going to be a really fun one so back to the point of order Boys, we have a brand new case. We, what is this new thing we've got to play with? We do. So this is our obelisk here. This is brand new. We just got this in. That's awesome. So this case, pretty standard <laughs> um, tower case here. But there's some really cool stuff in here um, that we'll get into a little bit. I'll just show you guys just a little bit before we get into the part. What? So it comes. We had this designed with built-in got that Hayden <laughs> I was like I don't want to hit you with the panel <laughs> with built-in anti-sag brackets so you can see these here we'll be pulling these out and arranging them as we build it so we'll go into that a little bit as we get on um, into this no build kidding. yeah this is really good really good design though and we do have our white one in the middle spot yes. behind us Jason if you cut to that real quick that is the white version as well so you guys can see that that is gorgeous the white the white cases always look good yeah yeah, these are these are brand new, just mm -hmm. released, and you can actually start ordering them today. Yep, they are so, available on our website. Yeah, pretty awesome. So we've got some brand new stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm. I do love the swinging doors. Those hinged doors really make it just yeah. make it so easy to get into the PC. I agree um, completely. So while he's pulling that case apart, let's uh, just run over real quick. What's going to be going into this device? All right, so starting out for our processor, we've got a Ryzen 9 7900X 3D. That's going to be cooled by our CLX Quench 360 millimeter AIO. For our motherboard, we've got the ASRock X670E Pro RS. Um, for memory, we've got a total of 32 gigs. Um, it's two 16 gigabyte sticks of DDR5 Patriot RGB memory. Um, pretty new memory to me. So I'm excited to get this thing going and see what see how that goes. We've got a one terabyte Kingston NV2 NVMe drive for our main drive and a four terabyte Western Digital Blue for our hard disk drive for extra storage. For a video card, we've got an RTX 4070 Ti from Gigabyte. Um, it's obviously going in our obelisk here. We're going to have seven total case fans, and we'll kind of go over how those go in a little bit. And then for our power supply, we've got a Gigabyte 850 watt 80 plus gold fully modular power supply. Nice. All right. Now, just to be clear, everybody, this is a brand new case. And so this today's build is going to be going in specifically for testing. They're going to be looking at how it performs as well as uh, seeing what different configurations that they can make in it. That's right. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and get started and talk a little bit about what you're seeing in the back there, Hayden, because the back is obviously where all the cable, well, where partial, part of the cable management goes. But it looks a little bit thinner than uh, than we've had in some of the two-thirds builds. So what's different about this? Well, from first glance, it seems like it's very uh, tight back here. So cable management just has to be a little more precise. And you, want, you have a lot of room right down here to tuck and bundle cables, which mm -hmm. is really nice. So I think once we have that panel on, and if you have your... Uh, you tie up close to the case, you should be fine. Yeah, and this front panel here, if you can rotate it back real quick, Hayden. So you can see our front panel. We've got a lot going on, but it's kind of in the frame of the case. 
which I like. So all these cables right here, these are for our front panel. So we got two USB 3.0s and a type C up there along with a headset and mic port. And then obviously our power button and nice. our reset button. But I really like how it's built in right here and it just comes straight down as opposed to sometimes yeah. they run kind of down the front panel and through a hole here. This should make cable management pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, it'll, with it'll bundling be, it all right there. It'll be pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Everything should flow. Yeah. Yeah. It should flow very well. Nice. Awesome. That sounds fun. Uh, by the way, for those of you who are new to the show, because I know there's a lot of people coming in who are new and here on kick. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the terms that you hear or just about computers in general, Please feel free to ask. We will get as many of those answered as quickly as possible. And, uh, of course, the you come on your screen, well, that's going to be the experts that will be responding to those questions. Uh, got questions coming in, though. Did I missed the early bird code. I don't know. That is a good question. Hello, Mary Jace has got us up. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, everybody, for all the follows. There we go. Okay, so first things first, let's talk a little bit about this uh, this motherboard because it's got some interesting features to it. Now, uh, as you can see, it's got a north bridge, a south bridge. It actually does have a heat sink for the M.2, which is great. It is an ASRock Pro Series. This is called the, the X670E Pro RS. Let's take a look at that I.O. shield real quick so we can just go over some of the pieces that this has. Obviously, the very top, you've got your display port and your HDMI. There are, it's a Wi-Fi 6E up at the top. You've got USB 3.2 uh, Type-C ports, a set Type-C port on there, four USB 2s, three USB 3.2 Gen 2s, uh, Gen 1s, a 3.2, 3.2 Gen 2s, and you've got a 2.5 gig LAN port, plus your uh, infrared and the mic and speaker. So there we go. Nice. Nice. Some decent connectivity on this. There we go. We'll start with our processor as usual here. So for a processor, we are using, let's see here if I have this color. This is a, a Ryzen. Oh, you know, today I was thinking I was gonna have it all together. AMD Ryzen 9 7900X 3D. Now, this is a kind of a unique processor because of the way it's designed. What are some of the cool features about the Ryzen 9 7900X 3D? Yeah, so this is a 12-core, 24-thread processor. So it has a lot of cores and a lot of threads. It can handle a lot. Its base speed is 4.4 gigahertz, which is actually really fast for a base okay. speed. Wow. <laughs> and it can boost up to 5.6. Um, so this is really top-of-the-line new Ryzen processor here. This can pretty much handle anything. And it's nice. AM5. And it's AM5. With yep. No so we've got pins on the motherboard yeah, and not on the of, processor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is different from the AM4. So the AM4 was reversed. Yeah. So our AM4 and b pretty much before that was all pins on the processor. Now, if you go way, way back to AMD, there was some pins on the board way at the beginning. But it's been a long, long time since we've seen that. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Let's go ahead and pop that little guy in there. One thing to note that I find interesting about the new AMD chips is that they are all square. All of them. Yeah, you know, we've they've, seen they've kind of got this Intel's unique... Um, the puzzle piece. Yeah, the puzzle piece. That's a good way yeah. of putting it. A unique design on, on the actual heat spreader here um, on top of the processor. It looks cool. All righty. Up next... We'll get what into our M.2. We'll go ahead and put this in the top slot. Yep. All right. Our M.2 is going to be a one terabyte Kingston NVMe M.2. And uh, that's going to be an entire terabyte of space on there for the operating system. I have one of these. I absolutely love it. It works extremely well and extremely fast. Yeah, you really can't go wrong with the M.2 for your main drive. And if you can, if it's within your budget and you can put everything on it, do it. All right, getting that in there. And of course, you got to be careful with that. Make sure it looks like a little 
skate ramp, pop it, pop it down, and then place your heat sink back on top. Uh, if is there any way to really screw this up? Like, what are some best practices for just getting that in there and making sure that it's secure and incorrectly? Well, what I like to do is go at an angle and kind of look down at it and make sure that my screws are lined up because if, you know, you're screwing down for a while and if nothing's catching, it's obviously not aligned with the standoff. Mm -hmm. But gotcha. as long as you're taking off that plastic on the back of the thermal pad, then you should be good. We've got our um, AIO bracket stuff here, so we'll go ahead and start mounting that now. Uh, so the question came in from uh, Shayana Ooh, is, who's the other guy? That is Paul Steffens. He's our lead technical expert, kind of uh, runs the installers stuff. People. I just watch Hayden do all his fancy work here. Right? Which is... Again, and we have specifically not allowed him to have power tools because with power tools, everything is just zip, 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 done. I, I'm oh, speaking like even. a tobacco auctioneer at that point. <laughs> Uh-oh. I see somebody screaming about the uh, tube of codes. Ooh, there, look at that. It's time for the early bird 50 code. Kick S-I-J-R, people. That's C, Junior. C Junior. I was making the joke the other day that I speak high. I speak very little uh, Spanish. I know that vitamin C means vitamin yes. There you go. Uh, so no, we are, we only we are not bailing on Twitch. We are <laughs> we're here on Tuesdays. We're gonna split it up between both platforms. But uh, Tuesdays are our kick days. It's Tuesdays my kick day as well. So. Just a whole long-ended opportunity for uh, you to get codes on kick today. It's going to be great. <clears throat> Ta-da! Look at that. 60 people getting that in there real fast. And for those of you who are brand new to the channel, welcome in. We do this every week that we can possibly can. Oh, you got it? Nice. Nice. You're getting weird audio echo. Is it just you or any? Do you have two tabs open? Let's see here. Damon of saying, hello. What's going on? So. Crunch, crunch. crunch. The there we go. We're getting our <laughs> getting our RAM into the house. So we have got two, crunch. two, get, two 16 crunch. gig sticks of Patriot <laughs> DDR5 6000. Though this is exceedingly fast RAM. Yeah, this is very fast. So this is obviously new DDR5. DDR5 is at the leading edge of memory right now. So. Um, very fast memory. I'm not too familiar with the Patriot variant of it. We have been carrying it for a little bit, but mostly what I used is Kingston. So we'll see how this performs in the lab. We've had a lot of good luck with Patriot in the past. So, you know. They're good. Yep. Nice. Real good. Now, I do see that, you know, we've, we've been, we've watched Hayden put some things onto the motherboard and attach a few things through the back of it. Uh, Hayden, what was, what is that? And what did you just put on the pump of the AIO? I just put on the retention kit so it kind of just looks like this and that yeah. literally lines up with our standoff that we put on so that's going to hold down our AIO on but it comes separate so you need to line it up and make sure that it's straight when you have it on gotcha nice all right and for this build, this we're going to go ahead and use the thermal paste that comes on our AIO here since we are wanting to do, to do testing on this. We do want to see how it tests with the thermal paste on this cooler already. And then, you know, after that, we'll probably take that off and put on different thermal paste and just kind of see how that goes as well. So for this, we can just put it on there. We don't have to put our dot on there since it's already pre-applied. All righty, get that all lined up. It definitely speeds things up. Uh, to answer IKEA Snowed, hello. Uh, are there, this week there'll be multiple codes to stream. It's very possible there's multiple codes to stream. There's gonna be codes on here and codes on my channel today. All right, getting that all locked down. Now, if anybody else has noticed, Aiden is not going in a circle. He's going using an X pattern. Aiden, why is that? 
Well, I uh, was taught that a very, very, very long time ago. But um, I have gone in like a circle pattern before, years and years ago, and it just didn't really end up right. So what would happen is if I were to screw these down first, your AIO is going to go out of slant and you have to push it down and it feels like you're going to snap it in half. This is going to gotcha. make sure that I am distributing <laughs> that pressure evenly and efficiently. So. Yes, my cap lock was on. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Now, we just screwed on an AIO. This is a CLX Quench 360 AIO. Paul, can you tell me what that 360 means and what an AIO is? How is it different from other ways of cooling PCs? Yeah, so what the 360 means, first of all, is that's the radiator size. So typically radiators are sized by how many fans can fit on them. So you can see I've got um, a 120 millimeter fan here and three of these will fit on this radiator, hence 360. Um, it's an AIO, which stands for all-in-one. So that means out of the box, this has the coolant in it. I mean, you saw, you, everybody saw us open this right here, brand new. So we just put our mounting hardware on there, install this, and that's all we have to do. Make sure the pump's plugged in and that's it. Um, this is a really good way of cooling your system. If you can go with a 360, do it. Provides excellent cooling and it's really easy to if install. You can, if you can work it into the budget, mm -hmm. it's definitely yeah. a lot better than air cool. Yeah, for sure. So do you want to put the fans on the radiator yeah. now? Okay. Do that now. So we're going to be... While we're doing that, we... Oh, go ahead, oh, DJ. I was saying, while we're doing that, we do have a couple questions or, or comments that come in. Uh, so Skyann asks, does Hayden b build all the PCs? No, there are many builders there. Uh, Hayden is our Tuesday builder, and Zach is our Thursday builder. Mm -hmm. uh, one question or comment that came in from Sasco is, as system builders, do you wish that DDR5 notches were a bit more off-center? Yes. Absolutely. I wish DDR4 was more offset and DDR5 was more I wish offset. it was like <laughs> less than an inch from the top. Or yeah, from the that bottom. would be great. Uh, as for the multiple codes, I think I answered that one. Yes, there's going to be codes here and on my stream. Oh, nice. You've been chatting with Bill over at CLX about yours. That's going to be awesome. Congratulations. Oh, Bill Workman. Nice. Bill's been here forever. This is a good. What day. are the three? And so we got yeah. Grumpy asks, "What kind are the three cases with pink light names? With pink light names of cases, please." Oh, I think he's talking about the ones behind. Oh you. yeah, the ones. These are Inwin 303s that we have in here. It's been a while since we built in them, but I really like that case. I use the 303 as my main chassis on my personal rig for a long time. I really liked it. They are pretty heavy, though. Interesting. An inland 303. I'm looking if we can find that on the site. Mm -hmm. And, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't believe we actually have them currently anymore. But, they are, yeah, uh, they're an older case yeah. for sure. They're cool. Uh, Engelheimer asks, do your PCs come with room and power cable or for more storage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of our PCs all have plenty of room for extra storage. The only time where it gets a little iffy is if you're doing like an ITX build, um, and it just depends on the case. But, yeah, I'd say pretty much everything we do has room for extra storage and, um, you know, extra power if you need it. Uh, I can't said somebody asked in the Discord if it's possible to get a CLX sticker to cover the as the Aztec on their AIO. Interesting question. Yeah, you should be able to um, get a cap for this. Um, so if you just reach out to our support, I'm kind of surprised you didn't have one already. But um, we can go back to the overhead shot real quick, Jason. I'll just show you. So this is our um, CLX cap right here. I don't know what this does. This just covers the pump, and that's what that is. Wow. You can actually okay. see our pump right in there and everything. So there's a bunch of different options you can get. Just want to make sure you're putting it back on correctly and that this wire is in the notch. Gotcha. Yeah, it came with your a your Aztec. Mm, okay. Aztec. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah, just go ahead and give a give a jingle over to customer service. See what uh, see what you can come up with. There you go. Nice. 
All right, so we're getting those fans all put on there. These, of course, are, are our uh, set. Oh, no, I'm sorry. These are the Game DS Aeolus M2 ARGB fans. Mm -hmm. Now, are these going to be pushing or pulling through that radiator? These are going to be pushing air through the radiator. So we obviously have our fans here. Airflow is going to be coming in this way, pushing through the radiator and out. And that is the optimal way to set up an AIO. There's some situations and cases where you might have to have fans on the other side pulling air through. That's okay if you have to do it, um, but it's best to push through. And then if you've got room in your case and room in your budget and you want to have fans on both sides, that's called a push-pull method, and that, that is even better cooling, but pretty uncommon to do that. Nice. <clears throat> welcome, everybody. By the way, Dirty Yankees in the house. Mount Angel, welcome. Glad to have you all. Red Kensu. Or Red Kensu. Thank you. That was your question. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Let's see here. Yep. Yeah, Dirty Yankee. I had no idea that was a cover either. <laughs> I'm going to be real honest. Now, we have three fans at the front. This is a little bit different than some of our other cases. This is closer to that Fantex, uh, to one of the Fantex cases, in the sense that there are no bottom fans on this. Right, so yeah. So where's the where's the intake and where is the exhaust yeah so i i've been referring to this design as more of the traditional um design for our case fans so our main intake is at the front so we've got our main three intake fans here at the front obviously air will come in this way and it'll exhaust out the top and out the back now our power supply will be down here and one thing that we like about the two-thirds design is it keeps the power supply and hard drives on, on a separate portion of the case well this this is called a psu shroud and this has the same effect just placed a little differently so you can see this piece of metal right here this is our, po our power supply shroud and our power supply is going to go down in here so it'll get air from the bottom of the case and exhaust it out the back hole right here uh i guess and so i guess that mentions i'm probably going to go uh with air cooling if i don't end up winning one of the pcs by the time i'm buying one i know liquid is great but i don't trust myself enough for it so can you talk a for a second about the difference between a an AIO and an open loop system. Yeah, so an AIO versus an open loop. This is obviously an AIO. We refer to this as closed loop since we don't open it up at all. Um, very easy to install. And then when you look at our open loop system, which Hayden builds a ton of those here, that's where we get into our custom tube bending and really our showcase systems. Those provide excellent cooling, but it is a ton of more labor that goes into those. They look great. Um, definitely worth it in the end, but um, you know if you if you're not comfortable, like like that's a lot of labor that goes into it. Also, you know, bigger budget. Big, yeah, a lot bigger budget on those. Um, now, using an air cooler, an air cooler is fine. That will work. Um, they are on there. Um, however, I would say if you can install an air cooler, you can install an AIO. These are it is yeah. kind of intimidating to get into these, but they are very easy to install. Yeah, the way I like to look at it, like if you have a lower end CPU. I don't see a use in using an AIO. I think yeah. you know, air cooling is going to be fine. But if it's a newer chip and, you know, you spent all that money on a newer chip, you might as well just go for the little upgrade on an AIO. Yeah, yeah. The AIO is going to allow your CPU to run at higher boost clock so you get more performance out of it. There we go. <clears throat> There's some answers and information. Uh, Kenny, <laughs> what's up, Ken? Good to see you. Welcome back in. Yes, and uh, again, it's all, all different stuff. Everybody's got their thing that they like. We saw some pretty intense air coolers at DreamHack Dallas. I mean, mm -hmm. those were kind of wild, the big box ones. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, there's some really cool uh, air coolers out there. So if, if that's what you're set on, by all means, you know, it's, it can definitely be a good option. There's some good um, aftermarket air coolers that will perform better than a 120 mil AIO. So that there's you know, some expensive ones out there. Yeah, there's are, some you know, nice ones. If nice you want to go top of the line, I'd recommend Noctua. They're great. Um, but there's there's a bunch of good options out there. I just don't know if we're at a point where you can even if you spend all the money on like a crazy air cooler, it's mm -hmm. not going to be the 360. Yeah, it just it can't keep up with the 360. It really can't. Yeah, and IKEA is going with a, the chip would be a 7700X, so. 7700X, yeah. yeah. I would definitely recommend going with an AIO on that. That's a really nice CPU, and you're going to yeah. want to, you know, you're going to spend, you're obviously going to be spending some money on that, so you definitely want to get the most out of your money for it. 
Uh, Inglehammer is a great question. Which PCs can be open looped? Um, so really that, any PC can be open looped if you try hard enough. An try open loop enough. is a very <laughs> custom design. So, you know, basically if you can fit a pump reservoir combo in there and bend some tubes, you're good. What, what really limits you for open loop cooling is, is are the blocks compatible with your motherboard and video card? So, you know, if you're just doing a CPU loop, you want to make sure that your motherboard is compatible with a monoblock that you can get for that motherboard. And same goes with the video card. If you're wanting to do a loop on your video card, you want to make sure you buy the right video card model that will match the block that goes on it. Um, as long yeah. as those two things match, um, it's really as, as creative as you can get, you can do it. I did have an interesting question coming in from Beanloaf. By the way, Beanloaf, welcome to the show. It says, how do you feel about the RTX 4060? I think it's a great card. I think like in anything in that 60 range uh, is just a really good mid-level card. If you're wanting to get into gaming, um, but you don't want to you know, spend an arm and a leg on the higher-end video cards, I think the 4060 is a great entry slot. Uh, next, we've got to go to work. Bye, Necro. We hope you have a great day at work. We'll definitely check in with you later. And as a good go... Yeah. Hello, Amelia. Welcome to the show. Uh, Glitchy, we did have one for 50 people that went out a little bit earlier. I'm pretty sure it's probably you, Tub. All right. Now, I do want to go back to one thing we talked about the fans here real quick because we've got technically three intakes and four exhaust, right? So that creates a negative pressure environment. Is that correct? Am I thinking about that right? What was that question, DJ? I'm sorry, my uh, my thing cut out. Okay, so if we've got the three intakes on the front mm -hmm. and three exhausts on the top, plus an exhaust on the back, does that create a pressure, a negative pressure environment? So that would um, create a negative pressure environment. However, when, since we're pushing air through this radio radiator, that's going to take up a little bit. So honestly, I would say this is a very balanced system right here. If these were just three exhaust fans not on a radiator in the top, then I would say, yeah, we've got a slightly negative pressure system. But I, I would say this is going to be pretty evenly balanced. Uh, Being listened, sweet, I have a, currently have a 2060 and wanted to upgrade it without breaking the bank. Okay, it's a good call. There you go, yeah. Uh, Eru Ann says, what's your opinion on liquid cooling systems? Fellow streamer essentially had to replace the entire PC because it's liquid cooler burst. Uh, yeah, liquid cooler burst and flooded the entire thing but while it worked uh it performed but while it worked it performed excellently yeah so that's pretty much um I'm, I'm gonna assume maybe he had an open loop system these aios here um that we're using the closed loop those i i may have seen maybe one, one seen or one. yeah in my time here maybe two or three leak in in the eight years that i've been here um, but those open loop systems, if they're not assembled 100% correctly and you've got a little bit of a leak, that, that can happen. So um, I'd really say most likely a fitting just d didn't get tightened down. An O-ring got pinched. Yeah, O-ring got pinched, something like that. Or your tube just wasn't long enough. Mm -hmm. Usually the three. But, um, you know, I'd still say go, li go liquid cooling, though, if you can. But I, yeah. I would understand if you're a little hesitant <laughs> if you had that experience. Put the CPU cable in. So, yeah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get our cables out for our power supply now. So if um, Hayden can plug in our CPU power before he installs our AIO. So IKEA asks, would a 360 or 4070 not, me, not be much better price for performance with NVIDIA's latest pricing tactics or even possibly going for an AMD card? Right. Interesting question. The question, 3060 versus a 4070? Yeah. Yeah. So it's I'm, like maybe a 10%. Yeah. I, I would go with the 4070, honestly. It's just, it, it's probably close right now, but as more games come out, it's the 4070 is going to last you longer than the 3060. I would go though. off price. If mm -hmm. it's, if it's uh, close in price, go for the 40, 40 series card. I can't remember the prices of the actual cards, so. It, it obviously comes down to what you're planning on doing with your machine, too. You know, if you're not trying to run AAA titles at the highest settings, then, you know, maybe a, a 
lower end video card is the, is the right fit for you or you're not spending a ton of money on something you're not going to use. Yep, good point. Now, you just pulled out something very interesting. This is our Gigabyte P850GM. It's an 850 watt, 80 plus gold, fully modular power supply. Now, some people might know what that fully modular piece means. Paul, how does this differ from other power supplies? Yeah, so this being fully modular, that means that none of the cables are pre-soldered in. So you can see I've got the whole power supply right here in my hand. No cables in it at all. I'm going to peel this plastic off so you guys can see these ports a little better. So this is where our cables are gonna plug into right here. And what's nice with the modular design is that we'll only use the cables that we need for this build. So the extras will be in the accessory box in case they're needed later on down the road, this customer upgrades or something like that. Um, but what this allows us to do is like, Hayden just plugged in our CPU power cable. You can see it right here come down to our motherboard. It allows him to plug this cable into the motherboard and bring the ends out without even installing the power supply. So it's just making our lives easier as builders by using this. And it gives your system a better look since we're gonna only use the cables that we need. There won't be any extra cables that we have to bundle up and tuck away. Gotcha. Gotcha, nice. And especially given the space in this, you know, we've got a big cons considerate of what else needs to be plugged in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, will the intake from this will come up from the bottom of the case, correct? This will go in the bottom of the case, yep. Got it. And it'll pull in and then yeah, exhaust yeah. out the back. Yep, it'll it'll pull air in from the bottom and exhaust it out the back. Just like this. With it being on the bottom, it will provide nice air for your hard drives and mm -hmm. all that cable bundle that you make. Yep. It'll hold that for yep. you. Uh, Ikea said, <clears throat> actually, the question that we're asking is, since you said 4060 was a good card, I'm asking if maybe using an AMD card or maybe going back yep. a generation isn't smarter until it's better priced for consumers. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you're not needing, like, the best performance and everything, you can always, um, you know, go back a generation I'm still and use that if it works. Yeah, I'm, I'm running a 2080 Super right now, so. Um, it is time for an upgrade, though. For yeah, me. I typically do. I typically stay a generation behind just to... Um, just because I don't need all that power. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, because I like, I'm, the machine behind me, I'm gaming on a 3090, uh, white 3090 OC, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah, my dream nice card. Thing. Yeah, you got Hayden's dream card in your system. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. It's okay, DJ. I hey, have did, the I, box. Did, I, did I tell you about what I discovered when I was in Destiny? No. It so it defaulted. I couldn't I was, you know, had all my settings going. I was like, all right, we're getting a good solid, you know, one fifteen to one thirty frames FPS. I was like, all right, well that must you know, on ultra with everything, great. Turns yeah, out great. for some reason it set itself to four K. <laughs> so oh. I dropped it back down to fourteen forty. So I'm not getting 4K. I what? I don't play 4K. I play 1440, and yeah, that's the know. fun part, is that it's 225 at the minimum for FPS. I never it's even tested wild. 1440, so that's hilarious. Yeah. Well, I was good. playing with the... When I was playing on Di uh, Dying Light 2, it was very interesting because we... the I'd never played with ray tracing on it. And it's wild, the difference in detail that you get with, with ray tracing versus without. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, I have never played with ray tracing, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it is very, very unique. Let's see here. <clears throat> yeah, when Kensu says I have a 3060 because it's all I need. Yeah, so it works. Like, <laughs> don't. If it works, don't fix it. Zombie psych. Zombie rain says I'm sitting here playing solitaire on a 6700 XT. <laughs> GG. Yeah, that's awesome. Pushing that card to its limits right there. He has so ray tracing. Dirty Yankee asks, yeah. Yeah. What is what exactly is ray tracing for? Dirty Yankee asks. Uh, Paul. Yeah. So really. 
a lot of that is just for these newer titles have all this uh, ray tracing in them and that really smooths out the graphics and just provides a really good look honestly yeah so my experience in dying light 2 was Dying what two. went yeah, from was what went from the <clears throat> really high end graphics on that when I turned ray tracing on at base level, all of a sudden you could see the reflections in water of people walking by or zombies. Like it, you could, there was a crispness and more of a detailed distance layering between them. You could really make it, it really gave it much more of a 3D and immersive 3D feel while also being so much closer to what we see with our own eyes in real life. The cloud, for example, the clouds in the game, when we, I was looking up and we were talking about this on stream, the clouds in the game look spectacularly real. Like, you look up the sky and it looks like they're literally pulling that from something they recorded with a 4K cam and just shoved it up there in Lightbox, even though it's completely computer generated. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned the water effects, and that was like the biggest, the, the craziest thing I saw when that came out. It was just, I think it was in Cyberpunk. It was just like puddles of water on the street, and it was just crazy seeing yeah. it with, that, with yep. RTX off and with it on. It was just, just wild. I actually had played ray tracing one time. Mm -hmm. Minecraft. Minecraft. <laughs> they, did Minecraft a, they did a ray Minecraft tracing. ray tracing like world. That's cool. A bunch of mods make it look crazy. Yeah, you can do a lot. Yep. I, I will say that one thing I was considering was because I... So in, if I turned it up to ultra ray tracing, that the highest settings possible on Dying Light 2, it brought me down to like 90... Eight, between like... 89 and 102 fps so i'm wondering if it would make a difference well i wonder what, what the sacrifice would be to go to two, uh, to 1080 in order to get more than 120 fps mm. with ultra ray tracing or if that is going to reduce that resolution enough that the detail is going to be kind of pointless yeah i think um yeah i, I think if you went down to 1080 with that um Obviously, it would be smoother because of your frame rate, but it might be fun to try out. I play 1080p just because I don't see any use in upgrading. And for the most part, my games, I run it low just because I like to crank the FPS as much as I can. Yeah, FPS is much more important to me, though, than resolution. Yeah, agreed. So if you went 1080p, you would get, like, yeah, you get a lot more FPS, I feel. Uh, cap sucks because I have a 3060 Ti. I think uh, think I should upgrade to a 4070. And uh, I brought up with a very good, very good point. Um, are you running at 1440 or higher? And what's your refresh rate? Excellent question. Uh, Engelheimer asks my thoughts on UHD graphics 630. Um, I am going to say that I don't listen to hip hop. I, uh, no, I'm not the person to ask. Uh, I would definitely say that's a question for the boys. <laughs> Guys, what are your thoughts on the Intel Graphics 630? I haven't messed with it much. Have you messed with it in the lab? I'm assuming that's being the onboard graphics. I um, haven't messed with it. Yeah, I haven't messed with it. Pretty much everything we mess with here has got the video card in it. Uh, let's see. Kevin Sucks just says, I'm trying to max out that 240 hertz. Ah, gotcha. Uh, Iru Ann says, sorry if it's a dumb question. First of all, no such thing as dumb questions in here. I've said this before, uh, but so some of you might have remember this, but here's the thing that I always tell people every time they think it might be a dumb question. Ages ago, 10, 15 years ago, somebody at a board meeting with all seriousness said, what if we make a movie about sharks in a tornado? Most absurd suggestion you could think of, and yet that made over a $5 billion. So... No stupid question. <laughs> uh, let's go with, she says, but is it fair to say that even if you have the best graphics card, it won't make enough of a difference in gameplay unless you've got a strong processor to match? That's actually an excellent question. Yeah, that's a good question. So that, that brings into uh, the idea of bottlenecking, which is I've got all this good stuff in my system, but I've got a really old processor. So none of like the high-end components of my system 
can be at their full potential because my processor is so slow. Um, that's definitely a thing that can happen. You know, you don't want to go with a really low end processor, spend all your money on a 4090. You're never going to get the performance out of your 4090 with a low end processor. So that definitely is something you want to balance out. Um, now there is a lot of wiggle room in there. So, um, you know, you don't got to match the exact model processor to your build there. Like I said, there is some wiggle room, um, but that stuff you can look up online or, or if you have specifics, you can definitely ask us um, what to go with. But it, it definitely is something to keep in mind when you're configuring your machine. Of course, that it comes back then. So, in because we're communicating everybody via Discord, and all of a sudden he just went straight robotic for that whole answer. And of course, that's one of those answers that I really wanted to hear, and I'm gonna have to go back and watch the VOD. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just literally it was. I'm trying to hear it. I'm like, okay, I'll just turn up the stream on my PC, and by the time I got it adjusted. Your signal came back. It's like a force, Shucks. naturally. Uh, Ivory says wrong. It's T. So, Ivory, it depends on where I'm at. If <clears throat> uh, if the place doesn't have a decent option for T, then I will go with coffee. I'm actually trying to reduce my coffee. I'm down to one cup of coffee a day right now. And that's... I used to be up four. So, yeah. Let's see here. Is the i7-11700K good? Asks Beanload. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. So that's actually what I have in my uh, personal rig right now. I have the 11700 KF, so it's the non-onboard graphics version of the processor. But yeah, it's pretty good. I think 11th gen was looked at um, maybe a little bit negatively, just with the leaps and bounds 12th and 13th gen Intel has has come with. Um, but yeah, 11th gen is fine. I've, I've had mine for I don't even know how many years now, and it's running good. Probably like Two, three, two three, four three. years, maybe. I don't know. I got one right when they came out because my system was dying. So, <clears throat> uh, we do have a question, a couple of great questions actually today. This is awesome. Uh, so, Ingelheimer asks, wait, uh, well, let's start, let's go back up to Dirty Yankee. Um, yeah, uh, it says, is there a website that can tell you what processor won't bottleneck certain GPUs? Um, I'm sure there is one. I don't have a suggestion offhand, um, but there's a lot of good stuff out there. You got something, Aiden? Well, I'm trying to. I'm yeah. trying to. I can uh, tell you one that will like compare GPUs and tell you if you'll bottleneck with like that, uh, but mm -hmm. not certain components. No. Yeah, I'm sure there's something out there. There's like power supply calculators out there where you can put all your stuff in. So I'm sure there's a version of that for the other components. Uh, Inkleheimer asks, would it be worth the 360 AIO for an AMD Ryzen 7 5700G? Yes, I would say so. Yep. Uh, Zombie Reigns, <laughs> what's up, Zombie? How are you? Uh, what is the highest powered video card you'd suggest for an R7 5700X? For 5700X, I mean, you could go, you could go 4080, 4090 with that, in my opinion. You know that that's a pretty top of the line processor. It you know maybe it's a couple a year or two old. I'm not even sure now, but that's still new, pretty top of the line to me. So th that'll that'll pair well with anything. All right, <clears throat> sorry, you're still roboting in Discord. I don't know why, but so I'm just waiting until all the noises stop before I mm. go to the next question. So Rich Casey says. Uh, I was curious and wanting to, some feedback from the fellas. I'm running an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X with a 3060 Ti Founders. Would you think? Would you suggest jumping to a four, to a 40 series? You have a 7950X as the processor, and a uh, 3060 for your video card. <laughs> I, I would say, yeah, you've got a lot of room. 3060 Ti. 3060 Ti. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that 3060 Ti isn't bottlenecking your system. But if there was a point a part in your system upgrade, that would be the one I would pick. Assuming you've got at least 16 gigs of RAM and, and all that, and then about two drive and all that good stuff. You probably have 32 though, with a processor being that big. Yeah. Damon have sent comments. I used to drink six shots of espresso in one drink, so I could uh, say I only had one cup. Okay, so when I used, I used to work at a coffee shop ages ago, and kid you not, because I had to be there at like, what, 4.30 in the morning? So, to do that, I uh, I would just start drinking shots of espresso like 
every hour. And so I was doing like six to eight shots of espresso a day throughout my shift. And when I stopped working there, the caffeine come down was absolutely atrocious. And I was extraordinarily unpleasant to be around during those times. <laughs> that come down was hard. It was really hard. Uh, Kev sucks asks, is the 57 heck, 5600X good? Yeah, the 5600X is a great uh, processor. Um, it's, I, I, I would still consider it mid-tier, but it's kind of at the top of the mid-tier. Uh, Zombie says, I run a 360 on my 5700X, and it keeps it around 20 to 25 degrees above room temperature. That's pretty good. Really good. Let's see here. <clears throat> Esme's like, listen, uh, if I have a white chocolate mocha in the large cup, it's three shots of espresso. That's, you know, I, I definitely used to do that. That's for sure. Try and get down to all these questions. Uh, so, SCT Squirrel at... Oh, wait. Um, Pre-made. Oh. Uh, he said, so, what is it? X, I'm trying to... x fine. I'm going to just call you Exifying. Uh, I'm about to buy a pre-made PC from Rent-A-Center. Is a pre-made good? Um, so it just depends where you get it from, honestly. Um, I don't know if that's going to be... Is that a brand new one from Rent-A-Center? If it's used from Rent-A-Center, I probably can't give that my full endorsement. Just depends on what it is, though, and where it's from. Just need a little bit more information um, to give you a good recommendation on that. There we go. <clears throat> um, just scrolling down here. All right. So, now that we finally got through, first of all, thank you all for all the questions. We love it. Let's get jump into our uh, card. This is a Gigabyte RTX 40... Whoops. 4070... No. 4070 Ti. It is 4070 Ti. Okay. Yes. Correct. Now this is a it's a big boy. It's a big, big card. Yeah, it's decent. What are some of the things that's yeah. I do like the closed end on it. You know, they've covered the the end the piping yeah. ends with the I, I just think that's a, it's a clean look. It really is. Yeah, I really like this card. I think this is the first forty seventy Ti I've seen from this model. I really like this. It's a little bit lighter than you would think. The PCB is really short. So you've got all this yeah. open air for our fins to to cool this off. Um, secondly, it's not too thick, which is nice. This is a two and a half slot card. Typically, we're seeing these, you know, at least three slots, maybe a little bit more. And then these fans in here, if I can get this at the right angle for you guys, you can kind of see down in there that clear um, ring. So these have RGB in each one of the fans, which is pretty cool pretty common i guess now but cool nonetheless and uh yes and you can th yes we do offer financing on our website uh simply go to clxgaming.com and to find out more power supply, power supply. yes all right we'll get mm -hmm. that pop in there uh ingle hammer says intel i3 10 105 Interesting, and a six with sixteen gigs of RAM and that Intel graphics card is. I'm not sure what those specs were for. I must have missed part of the conversation. Here we go. So now we're getting all the necessary and requisite cords into place. And again, uh, because a non-modular has so many different cables coming out because it has to meet the needs of multiple different potential designs. This, I would say, setup or routing, it's important to be conservative with your the amount of cables you've got because you have uh, less of a, a backspace to work with. Is that Would that be an accurate statement? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you only want to plug in what you're going to use. If you plug in more than you, what you're going to use, you're going to have to either unplug it or... Bundle it up and bundle do something it up. with it. Yeah. You just need the one so, SATA on uh, this, I'm assuming. Yeah. That's good. Let's see here. The uh, 
How much is this PC that we're building? Good question. This thing I think rings in right about twenty nine sixty six. Right about there. Uh, Dirty Yankee asks, uh, "How do you like the Intel cards?" I think they're great. The oh. art cards. Yeah, the art yeah, cards. They're nice. Yeah. I've messed with them a little bit. I haven't got my hands on them a super ton. I think the A770 is the main one we've looked at here. I really liked it. Yeah. Obviously, there was a little bit of hiccups at the beginning. Um, I but that's kind of expected with everything, and it seems like they got it all fixed. And I think it's a great, I think it's a great card for what they're trying to do. I would buy one mm -hmm. if all the emulation softwares I use were optimized. Yeah, it's just not optimized just yet. I think the biggest thing, like. The, the biggest reason I like the Intel cards is when they came out, they went for that middle of the market um, approach, and I really like that. They didn't try to come out with something that was the new 4090 killer or some crazy $3,000 top of the end card. It was affordable. They, yeah, it was affordable. Get you good, yeah, yeah, get you into gaming and just a, just a solid card for the price. Nice. That's three times my question got you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, if I, I apologize if I missed it. That chat was going pretty fast for a little bit. Uh, Decipher said I bought a CLX, uh, CLX for a, uh, about three years ago, and I still love what you guys do. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Thank that's you. We're awesome. really glad you're happy. Really appreciate that you're enjoying it, yeah. for sure. Paul built it. <laughs> maybe. Maybe <laughs> I did. You guys should put little signatures inside with... You know, we should. We've talked Thanks. about it. We, we've talked about doing it. I'll put so, a little card in there for so you. So something we do, and this is uh, something we do here. When you order a PC, you're going to get a checklist and, and pictures of every step of the way. So once it's done being built, you're going to know who built it, and you're going to be able to see pictures of it before it even gets to testing. Um, so you get pictures throughout the whole process, which is really cool. So if any of you have bought a PC or are waiting on it currently from us, if you tell us who built it, you know, we'll know who that is. I know we had somebody in here a couple of weeks ago had Jose built it, which is cool. That's cool, yeah. The next thing we do, we're just going to start posing for the pictures. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. If, right. if Zach builds your PC, look at your yeah. AIO yeah. cover. Uh, it's probably <laughs> his, uh, he's probably got his face in there as a little Easter egg, which is pretty cool. That's bad for Oh, yeah. It was RDK. Uh, yeah, that's right. Jose built RDKs. So, uh, so since we're talking about pictures and building things, I think this is a great time to just make a quick little segue to talk about how any, anybody here can purchase or even finance their own PC. At CLXGaming.com, we try and make it as easy as possible to get through, to get your PC the way you need it with all the right parts. You don't have to be a professional. Don't worry. We make it very, very quick and understandable. You choose your case, your motherboard, your processor, your RAM, and you don't have to worry about whether or not they're going to be compatible because if you choose something that isn't quite capable, say you choose a DDR4 motherboard, but you've got DDR5 RAM selected, that little add to cart button turns yellow and it goes to say solve conflict. The reason is because you can either choose a DDR5 board to go with the DDR5 RAM you chose or choose a DDR4 RAM to go with your DDR4 motherboard. Once you solve that, it'll say go back to saying add to cart, and you can select everything in there. We also have all sorts of accessories, from addition from uh, capture cards to additional sound cards. You name it, we've got it. We've even got our T-shirts and our windbreakers, like the one over there. And of course, you can now pick up Beacon products right here on our website. And those people, and the Beacon is also part of what's going to be given away with the giveaway this month with our partnership with uh, with Pick and Beacon. It's absolutely incredible. So, with all that being said, if you aren't super comfortable building your own PC, don't worry. You don't have to. We have got dozens upon dozens of ready-to-ship models already built and already designed by our custom ex the, our experts in the field. And those are all available as well. You just simply have to click on ready-to-ship. It's there to go. We can finance, we can pay in full, and of course, it all comes with customer service forever and technical support. So, with that being said, for all of your PC needs, just hop on over to clxgaming.com. It'll be fun, trust me. <laughs> and you'll end up playing with it, and building yourself <laughs> a $10,000 PC. Yeah, it it can get pretty nuts and I kind of love it over there. So, yeah. You missed an opportunity, DJ. Uh-oh, what did I miss? With all that beacon said. 
Oh, with all the be <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> um, you know for next time, right? Yes, now now I'm definitely gonna roll that pun. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, so the one thing that you mentioned was a really, really neat feature about this case is, of course, that it came with built-in uh, anti-sag devices. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a request from CLX that that happens, or? So we work with a couple case manufacturers and come up with a few designs. So that was something that we started seeing a lot, obviously, with the bigger video cards. So we worked with a case manufacturer, and really we had them you know, come up with a few designs. Our guys came up with a few designs as well and worked with them um, to get that. So this comes with two anti-sag brackets and then we kind of decide which one we need to use. So uh, most likely we're gonna use this one. It's kind of hard to see right now, but I've got my finger on it. And this will swivel over and we can adjust it to the height of the video card. This other one is for a little bit bigger GPUs and it sits more towards the front um, and, it, and it supports it that way. Gotcha. That's great, because this card is, let's be fair, not quite a light at all. Okay, let's make sure I didn't, uh, let's see here. Ingleheimer asks, if my power supply is non-modular, <laughs> where do you typically hide the wires? Yeah, that's a great question. So, Hayden, if you want to turn it around real quick, I'll show One you. One second. Once you get that done in. Um, so typically, in most cases, there's going to be room in front of the power supply where you can tuck your cables. You can see we had some slack on our SATA cable right here, so that's where Hayden bundled it up. If this was a non-modular power supply, this is where you could put all those cables. There's a nice chunk of space right there. No sagging is right. <laughs> where are the emotes? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, emotes on kick are definitely, uh, definitely different. I don't know if they're like better TV or what. Oh, it's just finding them. It's just a different, different, si different way of looking at things. All right. Uh, yeah. Throw those code emotes in there because. Oh, it said. I thought it said kick rocks. Basically, it is kick rocks. Unlimited code is kick dash rocks. R C K S. Yeah. There we go. And shift plus click them. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Does kick rocks. Here we go. Better than DJ's last code. Yeah. Um. I had to be clean about it because it was a. <laughs> Phoenix, somebody like kick rocks, bruh. <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about that one. Uh, yeah. Nope. <clears throat> Definitely not. So. All right. You know, those final bad boys in there. Uh, so the question came in, what is this motherboard? Well, that is an excellent question. This motherboard is a Asrocks X670E Pro RS. Coming with seven different fans. Yeah. All righty. Getting those final moments on. Yeah, so we've got pretty much everything tied up. We're going to install our video card, plug it in, get our anti-sag bracket lined up, and then we can figure out how many zip ties hey to use. Maybe you guys can count them right yeah. there. I don't Cheat. know. Yeah, this is your this is your time to get a, a good look at it. Oh, yeah. Time's up. <laughs> 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 nice, Hayden. Way to troll. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, everybody, is that if you ever do have to change something out, upgrade, or maybe modify your design on your PC, please make sure when you go and look at the at the uh, the cable management, take a picture of it with your phone. Then when you flip the zip ties, you know what needs to go back where and how, so you've got the best, I would say, cable management that you could. Uh, Paul, why is it important to have proper cable management? So the biggest functional reason to have proper cable management is less restriction of airflow. Um, so you don't want your cables kind of hanging out. Um, in some of the DreamHack PCs we upgraded, there was definitely some restrictions to airflow on the cable oh, management yeah. there. Um, 
other than that it's really just an overall clean look i mean you can look inside this thing and barely see those cables hayden did a great job of tying those up um so yeah it's, it's really um, less restrictions of airflow and an overall cleaner look okay um, and is hayden gonna put that in there I oh, there, I thought Peyton was stuck for a second. I'm like, wait, nope. what's happening? I was just frozen. <laughs> frozen all right, in real life. All locked in. And now that you took the, you took the NI SAG out first. I took, so the, this case has in? two of them. Mm -hmm. So I took out the one that goes in the front because I'm gotcha. okay. pretty sure. We'll, yeah, we'll this one some, in the we'll back is holding testing. it really well, yeah. but yeah, we'll test it, make sure it's good, but it looks good. What you're what you're looking for in the anti sag bracket, obviously you don't want to see the card sag, but the other thing is the placement of that bracket can sometimes obstruct the fan on the video card. So that's the other thing to look for here. This one looks like it's going to be good. It's kind of covering the fan just a tad bit, but it shouldn't cause it to uh, yeah. not spin or anything like that. Gotcha. All right, putting that in there. And that also gives us a little bit of space for that plug that goes in the side. That way it's not being pinched or pulling down on the socket. All right, zip tie time. Let's see here. Zip tie uh, time? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Well, I thought it was zip tie time. Is it not Happy. zip tie time? And it looks like it's about Happy to birthday. be. Happy birthday. I'll go in front. All right, we can. There's quite a bit of. Uh, let's do that. That works. That works. Yeah, that looks good. That side panel will will be enough room for our side panel as well. Right. Yeah, that's great. Right there. Zip tight time. Yes. Yes. Uh, Helfenberger. Uh, happy birthday. I Is wish I could say says? it to you in, uh, yeah, it's German. I wish I could say it to you in German. I just don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday, my friend. Have happy birthday. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. I have a schnitzel <laughs> on us tonight. <laughs> there you go. That's not a bad idea. I always, I love schnitzel. All righty. Or chocolate schnecken. When the schnecken beckons. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm lost now. It's from the birdcage. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you have you have you never seen the birdcage? I don't think so. Definitely oh my god! One of Robin Williams and Nathan Lane's funniest films ever. Who's Robin yes, Williams? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> hey, dead. Uh, Literally yeah. dead inside right Who now. Who is Robin Williams? <laughs> All right, people, time Mrs. to Doubtfire. I used to watch Jumanji every day before school. I yeah, would never Jumanji finish it, obviously. Was sick. Yeah. So I would go back yeah. and rewatch the same part. And yeah. It's my favorite. Uh, so we so uh, we do have a tradition here of trying to count how many different zip dies Hayden used. Uh, Hayden has probably already flipped them off. Hayden knows, yep. so throw your guesses in the chat right now. 19, 17, mm, I'm going to go with... 14. I'm going to go with 14 Dame, Dame coming Dame from Damon. Right there. 14, I think, is the right guess. 15 to 6. Is it? 56? <laughs> All right. Also, big shout out to Hyde Ultimate. 14. I knew it. It is 14. Someone in chat, someone in chat said it before we even like yep. asked questions and then changed it. Oh. So. That's hilarious. The peel. Uh, Ultimate Loser, by the way, is in our. He's in the house. Oh, What's welcome. Up? Good to see you. Welcome. Uh, Ultimate Loser was again. the winner of our June giveaway. Oh. So excited! I can't wait to hear uh, your thoughts on everything that you just got because it's really fun. That was our partnership with Atmo Esports. It was an incredible package. So super jazzed you got that one. To be honest, has his PC shipped yet? I do not have that information. I believe so. I think we shipped it today or sure yesterday. We shipped it today. Well, so uh, get ready. It's coming. Prepare it's a yourself. Very big box. Yes. 
All right. Give you this. Hey, and still got the plastic on that side, but I got it off on this side. Should we do a plastic peel? Now, plastic. Here's a question. How is the plastic peel off of this glass compared to that inside one was a little tough, but I can't complain. This one is nice. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right. I do like that, that glass front. Uh, do, does the glass at all on that front panel restrict airflow much, or is it because there's such a large opening that it just kind of funnels the air straight in? So how this works, if this was just a solid piece of glass, obviously it would be very hard to breathe, but you've got these cut, um, these cut-ins on both sides, look like about an inch and a half, maybe two inches right here on both sides. So that's where it's gonna pull the air in. So having those in the case will allow it to breathe very well. Gotcha, perfect. That is awesome. One last that final peel. piece of- uh, The final peel. Yeah, there we go. I love the way the CLX Insignia sits right in front of that top fan. Looks so good. So, uh, yeah, Ultimate Loser, make sure that you tag CLX Gaming uh, on any social post you do, because we would love to see the pictures and uh, and be able to post them. Also, throw them into the Discord. We're, we're super yeah, excited yeah, for you to get that. Yeah, we want to see that. I want to see yep. how the All right. final setup looks. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, let's see here. Are we uh, are we ready to, to do the deed? Yeah. Yep, we're good to go. All right. It's Jason, that moment of truth. Chase. Ta-da! CX, Nicole, hello! Well, that's fun. Cycling those, uh... Uh-oh. So we have two top fans not completely lighting up. Could just be... Oh, this might just be unplugged. Yep. Very possible, very possible, very possible. Uh, once again, yes, Gib Kick is the command to get all of the, uh, to figure out all the different ways that you can get entries to win our amazing July giveaway, which is a kick themed uh, PC in partnership with our friends at Beacon. We're also providing a Beacon Mix Create. That is an arm, a mic, and the Mix Create deck, which is really fun. Love it. So there you go. While they're getting those fans, fixed let me go ahead and go over once again what's inside this pc this is a brand new set obelisk black chassis it features an amd ryzen 9 7900 x 3d that's mounted in an asrock x670e pro rs motherboard that cpu is cooled by clx quench 360 aio and of course seven game ds aeolus m2 rgb black fans it has two Patriot 16 gig DDR5 6,000 sticks of RAM for a total of 32 gigs, along with an with an RTX 4070 Ti, and its operating system is on a one terabyte NV2 NVMe M.2 with a Western Digital four terabyte Blue as a secondary storage device. The whole thing is powered by a Gigabyte P850GM 850 watt 80 plus Gold fully modular design. And there you go. <clears throat> Okay, I'm really loving the way the Patriot color scheme is. You see that? It's fade. Yeah, it's it is nice. Really unique. That is not something I've seen other Rams do. There you go, Hayden. That's it. Very, very interesting. Let's see here. Boom. Just shipping the crate. Uh, uh, or. Yeah, uh, so Aki asks, uh, the shipping, the I giveaways ship way. in the crate shipping packages, right? That is a question I don't know. Gentlemen, does that yeah, ship so out in a... It if you're getting a raw, then yes, it will always have the sarcophagus packaging, um, which is pretty much most what we give away here. Yeah. Um, it depends, though. It just depends on the giveaway. It's a bad fan. It's lining up in the blade, but not the ring. Yeah. I'll get that. Okay, so we're going to get that. Sounds good. All right. Well, there it is. That is our new PC for testing. If you want to take a look at the giveaway PC, it is on the left-hand side over there behind Hayden's shoulder. You can see that from that front shot. There it is. See that? Absolutely incredible. And uh, we're so excited. And that, of course, is in our NV7. So this show happens in two different stages. Now, but just a moment, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, you're going to be spending the afternoon with Hayden as Hayden quickly and expediently puts together all sorts of PCs at breakneck speeds. Um, 
So to find out more about what's going on with CLX and where our content will be airing, you can check us out on social media, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter. If you'd like to join our community and chat and hang out with other like-minded PC enthusiasts, head on over to our Discord. It's discord.gg slash CLX gaming. And the best part is those places you can find different codes. But the best part is you can also find codes on stream here, on our other stream, and of course over on my stream. In fact, I'll be giving away a code today after this show. Uh, and so we'll wait till everybody gets there for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. In the meantime, um, thanks so much for watching. And don't go away. On behalf of Jason in production, Paul and Hayden, I'm BG Blue PDX. Uh, we'll be right back in just a few. Thanks for watching. Thank you, guys. Bye, everybody. Thanks for being here.